A trip to the ACC championship game on the line as Louisville visits Miami as a two-and-a-half point favorite. Jody Demling and David Lake are here to break down this game. The Cardinals have never won in Coral Gables, going 0 for 5, but Miami with a chance to be a top 10 team for the first time since 2017. Now, Jeff Brom has overachieved in his first year with the Cards, taking them to a 9-1 and record. A win this week would give them their first ACC title game berth ever. Meanwhile, Miami trending the other direction. It's lost four of its last six games since a 4-0 start to the season. So let's talk about the importance of this game here and what's at stake for each program. Jody, you can start us off. Well, what's at stake for Louisville and Jeff Brom said, guys, let's don't have anybody else do our work for us. If we win, we go to the ACC championship game. Yes, there's other scenarios. There's other ways that it could happen for them to still make it to Charlotte uh, in the ACC championship game. But Coach Brom has, has kind of stressed upon his team. Let's do the work ourselves. This is a big game. We've never won in Miami. We have a ton of guys down there, and they're going to still recruit Miami like they have always. Uh, a very, very uh, fertile ground for Louisville recruiting. He wants to, them to go down there, take care of business, and get the victory uh, in Miami and take care of getting the ACC championship game themselves and not letting Georgia Tech or Clemson or whoever else uh, uh, win a game and, and, and get them to the title game. So it's big for them. Yeah, and, and for Miami, it's an opportunity to try and earn a signature win here in year two of the Mario Cristobal tenure. Look, Louisville's the number 10 team in the country. Uh, Miami's earned some what seemed like impressive wins at the time, uh, but now with hindsight, um, you know, that week two win against Texas A&M, definitely not as impressive. And, you know, beating a down Clemson team, uh, probably not as impressive as it would be beating a top 10 Louisville team. Uh, Louisville is clearly one of the two best teams in the ACC this year. And, uh, and so that's a big opportunity for Miami. And from a betting line perspective, it's interesting. It's one of those weird games where uh, Miami is a slight favorite over a top 10 team. So uh, one of those interesting type of games where Miami can, can earn a signature win um, against a top 10 team as a favorite. Miami also still trying to figure out the quarterback situation. Tyler Van Dyke will start after being benched last week for Emory Williams. Awkward situation now as Williams is out for the season after that significant arm injury suffered against FSU. So, David, how do you think TVD responds here? Yeah, I mean, that's a big question for the game. Uh, you know, I did find it interesting that head coach Mario Cristobal, who, who typically likes to keep things under wraps in terms of personnel or even just starting quarterbacks, he came out and said on Monday, yep, Tyler Van Dyke is going to be our guy this week. I think that was... Uh, to kind of breathe some confidence into Tyler, who's been struggling with some interception issues and has quite frankly looked a little bit unconfident here in recent weeks. I think this was an opportunity to get the team to rally around him. He's our guy this week, et cetera, et cetera. But Tyler needs to do a better job of protecting the football. He has 12 interceptions on the year, which is uh, you know third most, I think, in the country. Uh, so Miami decided to go back to Tyler after the Emory Williams injury at Florida State, I think the intention was for Emory to be the starter from here on out, but an injury derailed those plans. But backup quarterback Jakari Brown, who gives kind of a dual threat look, is certainly um, going to be ready to go as well as the backup. Whether it's TVD or Jakari Brown, they'll be going up against a Louisville defense that allows just over 17 points a game. That's the fewest in the ACC. Jody, what's working so well for the Cards defense this year? A, a little bit of everything. And quite honestly, we didn't think with the new change in the, in the coaching staff and the guys that they lost off of last year. Remember, they were number one in the nation in sacks last year, but all those guys are gone. This new coaching staff has come in and they've really done a good job. Third in red zone defense, sixth in third down percentage defense. Those are the two biggest things. They're getting pressure on the quarterbacks. They're getting uh, the defensive line is, is using 10, 12, sometimes 13, 14 different guys. Ashton Gelati gets a lot of the hype, but there's a lot of guys playing on that front line uh, that have been successful for Louisville. So that's the thing. It's not just one guy up front. And then in the secondary, Quincy Riley might be one of the best corners. Uh, I don't think he definitely is one of the best corners in the ACC. Might be 
one of the best corners uh, coming out to, from what we hear from uh, some NFL scouts, that he could be a, a top three round pick coming into the draft this year. He's played at a high level and guys in the secondary. It's just been a defense that Ron English, they've called the right blitzes at the right time. They've done different things of, uh, of, of moving guys around at the last second and, and scheming things and twists and turns up front uh, using a lot of guys and, and really having a lot of success with the depth that they've built. And it's really fun to have a strength on strength matchup here between the Louisville run game and Miami's run defense. Miami ranks best in the ACC, allowing 86 rush yards per game. So, Jody, how do you see this matchup playing out? Well, it's kind of wild that Louisville's run game is still where it is right now because Jawar Jordan really, since uh, the Notre Dame game, which was a long time ago, has not been 100% healthy. He missed most of the Pittsburgh game with an injury, was then injured uh, in Louisville's game. The next game against Duke was hampered the last two weeks. I'm told that he's going to be close to, if not at full strength this week. And oh, by the way, now that he's been out of there, Isaac Garendo has run for over 100 yards for the last two weeks. Garendo's a, a, a great looking young man. He's 235 pounds and he doesn't look like it. And everybody misjudges that speed. They're always like, oh, this guy can't run that fast. And then he runs by everyone. So their two headed monster has really helped Jeff Brom. It's, if it's not Jordan, it's Garendo. Sometimes they've had them both going this year. And I think this week is a week where they're going to have to have both of those guys going in order to get some something going against Miami. Yeah, that two-headed monster at, at running back for Louisville presents a big challenge for a Miami run defense that ranks sixth overall in the country right now. Again, 86 yards per game, only 2.8 yards per attempt they're allowing from opponents, which is fourth best in the country. Miami's only allowed one 100-yard uh, rusher on the season, and that was the ACC's leading rusher, North Carolina's O'Marion Hampton. He went for 197 in that win for the Tar Heels. Uh, so Miami's going to have their hands full again. Jawar Jordan, number two back in the ACC. And then Isaac Garendo, as, as Jody mentioned, also a tremendous challenge. So, look, Miami's defense needs to find a way to try and make Louisville one-dimensional. And for them, that starts with trying to contain that run game. Well, the betting spread has these teams separated by one possession, so should be a competitive game here. Uh, David, what do you think the key to getting a win is? Yeah, I mean, I touched on a little bit earlier with, with Tyler Van Dyke uh, returning as the starting quarterback, but for me, it's pretty simple. It's it's protecting the football and trying to win the turnover battle. When, when Miami has done that this season, they've given them a chance to win. They, they have 20 turnovers on the year, which is tied for worst in the ACC. Uh, they had in their four losses, they've lost the turnover battle 13 to four, um, and, and they've lost the turnover battle in each one of those losses. So, uh, Tyler Van Dyke, again, fourth most interceptions in the country right now with 12 Louisville has forced 18 turnovers, which is top 20 in the country. It's a pretty simple ask for Miami this week, but they have not been able to do it on a consistent basis. But, uh, the best path for them to win right now is protect the football. And when we talk about Louisville, it's kind of a little bit of the same as far as Jack Plummer. When Jack Plummer has been good this year, when Jack, they've worked a lot, Jeff Brom and Brian Brom, the offensive coordinator, have worked a lot with Jack Plummer on being a better game manager. When they had him at Purdue a couple years ago, and then when he went to Cal last year and played, maybe not as great as far as managing the game. When he has been an A or an A-plus game manager, Louisville has been much better on offense, which tends to lead them to uh, victories. A couple of halves where they've struggled is when he struggled. Louisville has to contain, has to take care of the ball, not turn it over, and Jack Plummer has got to manage the game. I don't expect him to come out and sling the ball all over the yard. I mean, I think they're going to throw it around a little bit, but uh, I think it's more about manage, managing the game, and it's more about Plummer just making the right decisions more than anything else in this game. All right, Jody and David, thanks so much for your insight and for more of their work and more on this game. Be sure to check out Inside the U and CardinalAuthority.com for all your Louisville and Miami football and recruiting news all year long.